on a book entitled Lolita, Vladimir Nabokov writes, and this is from the afterword that was deliberately added for perspective and clarification. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm Reen here and welcome to Reader Day Club. Thank you so much for watching the video. So anyway, he writes that if you're going into this book, assuming it's going to be a lewd book with erotic scenes and raunchy content, then your cancellation of Nabokov's work is based on the treatment of the theme rather than the actual theme of the book itself. Then he also says, um, he also talks about Lolita as a story not being didactic fiction, fiction that's supposed to teach you something. You know, it has no moral instruction of any sort. And there are plenty of examples in the book to prove that, such as that my novel does not contain various allusions to the physiological urges of a pervert is quite true. Then there's another one on page 5 and I've made it a point to uh, highlight these excerpts simply because of, um, simply because of how um, heavily criticized Lolita is. There lurks a general lesson, the wayward child, the egotistic mother, the panting maniac. These are not only vivid characters in a unique story, they warn us of dangerous trends. They point out potent evils. Lolita should make all of us, parents, social workers, educators, apply ourselves with still greater vigilance and vision to the task of bringing up a better generation in a safer world. Then there's another one on page 23. My humiliating, sordid, taciturn love life. Uh, it's a story of a grown-up man, Humbert, and when I say grown-up, I mean in terms of the physical body, uh, who falls in love with and establishes a relationship, sexual relationship, with a 12-year-old girl called Lolita. Now, why that happens and how that happens are not in any way irrelevant, of course. Uh, and if you haven't read the book, then I'm going to leave that to your imagination. But if you've read the book, then you can understand that the whole purpose of the author's um, novel here is aesthetic bliss. Allow me to elaborate on that. In his essay titled Good Readers and Good Writers, Nabokov says that beginning any book with a preconceived notion means you've already traveled a great deal of distance away from that book. He uses the words ready-made generalization. And even though it's very hard to not view Humbert as a predator from this point of view, since he has a thing for girl children between the age of 9 and 14 whom he likes to call nymphets, you are still drawn into the messy web of artistic contentment and indifferent imagination weaved by the author. Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, my sin, my soul, lo li -ta, the scepter of my passion, the ache remained with me. I broke her spell by incarnating her in another. These are words of confession and the very behavior reported by Humbert himself, an ill-fated madman who is still foolishly, shamelessly and fiercely in love with his deceased childhood sweetheart, Annabelle. The 25 years I had lived since then tapered to a palpitating point and vanished. If you interpret Humbert or even Lolita through a personal lens, you're missing the whole point. In his essay, Good Readers and Good Writers, Nabokov urges you to develop an artistic imagination. He guides you to perceive Humbert's and Lolita's characters as just another disguise of literature that's only doing its work of enchantment. So it would be wise to read the book with your spine rather than through your emotions, moral sense or even logical thinking. Young Lolita's seduction itself is a huge part of that impersonal imagination Nabokov talks about in his essay. In everything from her flirtatious body language, rebellious nature and blunt, unfiltered use of words, Lolita evokes both delight and sadness. If you identify yourself with a character like that, once again you lose the whole point of the novel. 
because objectively speaking lolita and her actions and appeal have no meaning it's all a part of the bigger picture which is aesthetic bliss the art of writing is a very futile business if it does not imply first of all the art of seeing the world as the potentiality of fiction nabokov writes the unabashed storytelling of lolita although i don't think unabashed is the right word to use here nevertheless this shameless confession slash account of humbert's life the two very long road trips they take together staying at motels driving from one city to another is unsettling no doubt in terms of the dark disturbing element that lurks behind everything all the time but it's also slightly whimsical because of how tormented humbert feels most of the time when it comes to thinking about lolita's mortality the fact that she is inevitably going to grow up and cease to be an infant and he's always also suspicious about her loyalty towards him at the back of the book there are these words written there's no funnier monster in modern literature than poor doomed humbert humbert so maybe i'll end the video on uh, on this note if you've read the book then let me know what you think about it and if you haven't then i hope that you gave humbert humbert and uh, nabokov at least the chance to make their case anyway thank you so much for watching the video